Hello uh, YouTube! Today we will uh, look at astrophotography and which lens is the best one on Sony crop sensors for astrophotography. Up until now the undisputed king of astrophotography has been the Samyang 12mm, also known as the Rokinon in some markets. But recently Sigma released their 16mm lens, which is a f1.4 it could be a good option too. As we saw in my previous video, it's a very sharp lens. When doing astrophotography, there are two properties in a lens that are really important. It will be dark when you're photographing astrophotography, so it's important to get a lot of light. So you want a lens with a wide aperture to let in a lot of light. You want it to be a wide angle so that you can use a longer shutter speed. Samyang is a 12mm, which is an ultra-wide lens, which is great. It allows for shutter speeds of up to about 25 seconds without getting star trails. And it's an f2, which is also very wide for a wide-angle lens. It's also a sharp lens, and it's small and lightweight. And here you can see one of the photos I've taken with the Samyang stars, and he also has some aurora on this night. The new contender is the Sigma 16mm. So at 16mm it's not quite as wide as Samyang, but it's an f1.4, means it lets in about twice as much light. That is probably going to be quite a big difference. Here you can see one of the first astrophotos I took with the Sigma. Unfortunately I did not bring the Samyang when I took this photo, so I couldn't compare them at the time. And this photo is actually taken at ISO 100 which is just amazing. The Samyang is a manual focus lens, which means you have to manually focus it. But for Astro, that's actually often an advantage. Autofocus doesn't work very well when it's so dark. And when you have a manual lens, you have great manual focus, and you can also just set the focus for infinity when it's bright daylight, and tape your lens in place and leave it there for an entire night. I don't have to worry about focusing. The Sigma lens supports autofocus, but of course it also has manual focus. However, I find that the manual focus on the Sigma has too little resistance, so it's easy to accidentally move the focus when you don't want to, if you for instance just want to recompose, grab the lens. But, I have actually found that autofocus works quite well for astrophotography with the Sigma. If you're in autofocus mode, enables focus magnification and then move the crosser over a star and press to focus, it will actually catch focus very well. Not a very quick autofocus, but it's faster than the manual focus, at least on the A6500. Fortunately, I don't think this works on the A6000, because you can't do a focus magnify with autofocus there. Once you have autofocus, you can put it back in manual mode and it will stay at that focus distance while you do your shooting. Don't pump into your focus ring. Of course, you can just use the old trick of taping your manual focus ring. Let's look at some stars. Here we have the scene for the night, and it was not ideal conditions. As you can see, there's quite a bit of noise pollution in the outside. But it will work for a comparison of lenses, even if the artistic value isn't that great. First of all, this is the Samyang, and if you would just compare the field of view with the Sigma, you can see it's a narrower field of view. Personally, I prefer the 12 meter view. Both these shots were shot at the wide open, which means f2 for the Samyang and f1.4 for the Sigma. If we first uh, compare the sharpness in the center, you see that they are both similar. Not much difference in sharpness. Sigma will of course be a bit more zoomed in because it's 16 millimeters compared to 12. But sharpness I would say it's very comparable. The Sigma is brighter at uh, f1.4 but I've adjusted this in post-processing so they look the same. But as a result uh, Samming will have a bit more noise than the Sigma. And if we stop the Sigma down to f2 so they're both at the same f-stop it does get slightly sharper, but it's not big difference. 
If we stop this um, yank down one stop, it does get sharper, but we get more noise. Now let's check a bit more towards the edge. Now both are wide open again, and we have the same cluster of stars. And here we see the sigma is quite a bit sharper. And also, because of the wide aperture, more of the dim stars are visible on the sigma than in the Samyang. And if we compare in the corner, once again, the sharpness isn't that different, but the sigma will show more stars. One thing we can notice here, right in the corner, is that the sigma shows a bit of coma. You can see the bright stars right in the corner have a little bit of tail, which I don't have in the Samyang. But this is right in the far corner. However, if we move a little bit further inwards, we can see that it's the Samyang which has a bit of coma, while the sigma has around nice stars. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. And once again, you can notice that the sigma shows more of those dim stars than the Samyang does. Now these comparison shots have uh, both been shot at uh, ISO 800, and then adjusted in port processing to get the same exposure. And that is the recommendation I've seen, that the Sony X6000 series will have the least amount of noise if you use ISO 800, and then adjust the exposure in post-processing to get the right exposure. Let's see, let's compare our ISO 100 with the Sigma ISO 800. These have been adjusted in post-processing to have the same exposure, and also increase the contrast to really see the noise. I hardly see any difference in the noise level between these two. However, I do see that the stars are more round in the ISO 100 shot than in the ISO 800 shot. So from this I actually suggest shooting at ISO 100. Here is another scene I did. And this is shot at ISO 800 again. It's with a Sigma. And you can see that the lights are blown out because I shot at ISO 800 so it's overexposed. It would have been better to shoot it at ISO 100 if I had known at the time that the noise would be the same. And if you compare the field of view with the Samyang, you see it gets wider field, which I like more. We can compare some stars again. This is center. And once again, we see the same thing. Sharpness is about equal, maybe a slight edge to the Sigma, but the Sigma gets more of those dim stars. Another problem with the Samyang is that, at least my copy, it's decentered, so the right side is not as sharp as the left and center. This is actually the better of two Samyangs I've had. Here you can see at the right side, the Samyang is not sharp at all. The Sigma is a lot better. That's my Samyang, but that's kind of the lottery with buying Samyang lenses that they don't know if it's a good quality or not. The best I got. I haven't heard any complaints about the Sigma quality. So, can we draw any conclusions from this little test? First of all, I, as I mentioned, I prefer the wider field of view of the Samyang. Of course, there is always the option of taking several pictures and stitching together in post in a panorama view. If you prefer the wider field of view like I do. We can see that the, the aperture of the Sigma lets in more light and shows more of those dim stars. Sharpness seems about the same if you get a good Samyang. Maybe a slight edge to the Sigma. All in all, I think we now have two good options for astrophotography on the Sony A6000 series. The Sigma may even be the better one, but you make up your own mind.